ESPN Speed World welcomes you to Binghamton, New York, as we get set for round 11 of the AMA 250 Motocross Series. Hello, everyone. I'm John Kernan, along with former motocross champion David Bailey. And David, Jeff Emig, last time he wins the moto, finishes second, but he doesn't gain any ground on Jeremy McGrath. He still trails by 33. What would you do if you were in Emig's shoes? Uh, uh, sabotage, maybe? <laughs> uh, work something out with Bradshaw? Yeah. I don't know. I think he's doing the best he can. He's still winning motos, and... And tied on points isn't that bad. No one else can beat McGrath, so how the heck is he supposed to? <laughs> so if you're Jeremy McGrath, you've got four motos remaining in the season, a 33-point lead, what do you do? Well, I think he can be a little more conservative. If I were Jeremy, I wouldn't interrupt my race plan. It's something that's been working so far. Go out and ride aggressive, and then if things don't pan out real well, a bad start or, or in a, si a sticky situation, then tone it down a little bit and be safe. Well, that's the strategy from our expert. We'll see how that plays out. But first, let's take a look at the track. Well, it looks kind of like a Malibu Grand Prix course. Pretty, <laughs> lots of corners. What you can't see from this track map is all the hills. Lots of hills here, but the biggest challenge today will be that rocky soil. A lot like Unadilla, they'll be trying to dodge that roost. Does it favor any one particular rider? Guy that gets the hole shot. Guy that gets the hole shot. Well, there's a guy right there who has a lot of speed, ridden with a lot of speed in the past. Damon Bradshaw possibly will go for the hole shot as we get set for the start. David Bailey, Art Ekman, and John Kernan getting set for the start of moto number one as we begin round 11. Boy, David, we're almost finished with the season. I'll bet Jeremy McGrath is glad. He's just been <laughs> wandering around these racetracks with a huge points lead. Now he can finally wrap it up. Well, there they go. Let's see who gets Oh, look, Jeremy's off to a pretty good start as the riders come through the turns. John Dowd's also in there behind Jeremy, but it looks like McGrath has got the hole shot. And, hey, I said it all season. When he gets the hole shot, it's look out for everybody else. That's right. But he's got last year's race winner, John Dowd, right on his heels. And I don't think John's going to let him get away here. John's very comfortable in this kind of soil and obviously very fast here on this track. Well, Dowd, of course, uh, dislocated the shoulder for Washugal and missed that. Uh, maybe that uh, you think that'll play into today? Well, I think that uh, he's recovered. Otherwise, he wouldn't be out there. And he's probably pretty fresh and, and uh, chose the right track to come back to. He's very comfortable here. Well, you can also see James Dobb is in the background. And also we saw, uh, well, that's factory Phil Lawrence. And uh, we saw Ezra Lusk, who's returned after uh, that injury that he uh, suffered earlier in the year, missed almost the entire season. But Jeremy McGrath has the lead. He has the points lead. And you got to ask him, hey, what are you going to do during the off season? Well, we did. And here's what he had to say about it. Yeah, I plan on going to Europe. I have the World Championship Series I'm going to do, and probably equals out to be about six races in Europe. So I'll probably be over there for a month and a half. You know, I'll fly back and forth. So that's going to take some time out of my schedule. But uh, I'm definitely welcome, welcoming some time after the National Series here. I think this is the first year that I've put 150% in the whole year, and uh, that vacation time is long awaited. I know the feeling. I tell you right now, James Dobb is holding off Damon Bradshaw, but Bradshaw is putting on a charge. He finally is off to a good start early, David, without crashing. Could it be time <laughs> for Bradshaw to win one of these motos? Well, maybe. This is a great opportunity. It's the first time uh, past the first lap, and he's had a good look at the leaders, and uh, they're not getting away that far. So as long as he can keep them inside, he can stay enthusiastic and possibly uh, put on a, a charge that we really haven't been able to see so far this season. Well, the battle is uh, shaping up front as uh, Dowd trying to chase down Jeremy McGrath. And uh, just a few seconds ago, you saw McGrath's mechanics hit Norfolk hold out a board that uh, look with an arrow. Was that like look ahead, don't look behind? Was Probably, that yeah. That's that's the best advice that you would want to <laughs> give your rider. Don't look behind you. Uh, you tend to kind of draw yourself back to whoever's challenging, and you start riding defensive. And when you do that, you can't really get away. And right here, Jeremy, uh, although... Dow's still pretty close. This is about the most breathing room I've seen him have so far. So maybe this is uh, the beginning of something that Jeremy's going to be very comfortable with. 
Well, there's been 20 motos so far in the 1995 season. McGrath has won eight of those motos. That's pretty impressive. But Dowd right now with that impressive run just hanging on to McGrath because all season long, if Jeremy's got the whole shot, he just builds those 10, 15 second leads and is gone. But Dowd is hanging tough right now. And also, as we look back just a little bit, you see Dobb and Damon Bradshaw still trying. Oh, and look at this. Second place in points, Jeff Emig is down, and that's going to drop almost all the way back to the end of the pack, David. Well, it's not quite that far back, but yeah, he's going to lose a lot of positions. And right here, Bradshaw makes the pass on James Dobb. Nice move. That's one of the sections of the racetrack where it's very rocky into a little off-camber corner. Bradshaw shows a much faster line and seems to be running a faster pace. Now it, uh, he's got a little ways to go to catch up to the leaders, though. Now you can see all those rocks out there. How much more difficult does that make it to set up the suspension correctly? Well, the rocks doesn't really have that much to do with the suspension. Uh, tire choice, I think, would be more uh, of an issue there. But choosing different lines, you can see how rough and choppy it is. Uh, that does play a part in the suspension. And I, I think you would probably want to set it up pretty much the same as what these guys ran at Dilla. Just, just go back and ask the suspension guys, hey, what did I have there? And, and, and start with that. Pulled out the little black book from that, uh, from that event, huh? Well, now this is a great battle for third place. But look as Dobb gets a little sideways coming out of that turn. And Bradshaw pulls away. But Bradshaw slows way up to get, to get into that corner. And he loses that advantage. It's one bike link. This is some great racing. Well, Dobb makes a little mistake in that corner. You see how important the line choice is. You, you make up a lot of time in one section. And then you just uh, don't hit the rut quite right. And you lose a lot of ground. So. It's a long moto, and these guys at this point in the race are still settling into what has happened to the racetrack since the last time they saw it in practice. And uh, it'll take them a lap or two to get adjusted. The guys that, that uh, can do that quickly are the ones that uh, have a huge advantage in the beginning of the race. Well, now look at Bradshaw is pulling away just a little bit as he has taken over the third spot. But Jeremy McGrath is atop the leaderboard as you take a look at our Suzuki Field Summary. Pick out your favorite rider in the top ten. We will be right back at Binghamton after this. As we rejoin the action at Binghamton, New York, Jeff Emick, second place in points, pulls over. You saw he dumped the bike just a little bit ago. And, uh, David, where are they working? What are they working on? I don't know. Oh, it looks like they're just twisting the front end a little bit. When he went down, you twist the front end, and uh, the forks get twisted in the triple clamps, and you're, the wheels go in one way, the handlebars are going the other. So anybody that's ever ridden a bicycle knows how that feels to try to ride straight. <laughs> he can go faster the rest of the race with that straightened out, having lost a little bit of time. Well, he's lost quite a few positions out there on the circuit, but he's still got some time to make it up and maybe salvage a top ten out of this. Art Ekman is down in his pits. Let's check in with him. What happened to Jeff, and uh, does he have a bike that's capable of picking up a few positions? Yeah, I think the bike's fine now. He had, he, I guess he hit a tree, from what I understand, and the bike was pretty bent up. He twisted the throttle around to where the front brake wouldn't work. We've got that fixed. I think all that's wrong now is the front end's a little bent. So, I don't know, he's so far back, I don't think he can, he can do much good in the overall motor. And, uh, he can maybe just work up. I think he's out of the top 10. Maybe he can work into that. But it's still a fair bit of time. And uh, I know I'd hate to see Jeremy win it now, that's for sure. Of course, if Jeremy leaves here with only one event left with a 51-point edge, it's all over. So Jeremy could clinch it today. Well, he could just uh, take his vacation now. <laughs> he said he needed one. That'd be probably nice to have to, uh, to go to that last race and just on vacation. I don't think uh, John Dow's going to give him a vacation, though, at this first moto. Although McGrath, the lead is somewhat stabilized as uh, Dowd is still trying to chase him down, but he's just not picking up any of the distance. And you see the fans, more than 11,000 are on hand to watch this event. They're cheering them on. You don't know if they're cheering for Dowd or McGrath. And speaking of Jeremy, Art Ekman is with his mechanics, Skip Norfolk. Well, Skip, definitely a good break to see Emmett go down like that, uh, even though I know that uh, Jeremy's out front battling. That change in shock during practice must have really been the right move. Well, yeah, actually, uh, we made a change. I wasn't sure about a few things. Uh, we went back to some notes and uh, looked things over and found out that it, uh, I made a mistake. I thought it was something else. So we went back to our original race shock on the second practice and uh, made some fine tune adjustments after that. And uh, yeah, it really seems to be working good. And, and you hate to see Jeff have a problem like that. We were looking for a good race here, but uh, that's racing. And you got to take him when you can. Well, that's awfully nice of you, Skip. I, I know that, uh, yeah, he would like to see a, a good fair and square race, but he can't tell me in the back of Skip's mind. He's not just a little bit glad to see Emmick stuck back in the pack. Well, he's got to be pretty happy right now because McGrath, whose rider, has pulled out to a, about a four-second lead over second place John Dow. We'll get a look at the uh, top five here, and there's Mike Kudrowski coming along about fifth. 
almost 18 seconds behind the leader. Well, Dowd is uh, pushing McGrath pretty hard, and McGrath is he's holding his own. He's, they're, they're moving uh, pretty quick. They've opened up a pretty good lead over Bradshaw, who's still riding pretty aggressive in third place, but it's pretty spread out after the top two guys. Well, there's Mike Kudrowski. A lot of interest on what's going to happen with him uh, next year. A lot of people talking retirement. And, uh, you know, he's been around for a while, 26, 27 years old, has a championship. You got to wonder what more he's got left to prove. Well, I don't think that much. He's got four championships and one in each class. He's never been able to win a Supercross, but, uh, you know, you can't win them all. I never won a 125 title, so there. <laughs> Did you ever race 125s seriously, uh, though? No, I think I was pretty much a heavyweight. Honda considered me as, as one of the guys that could win a Supercross title or a 250 or a 500 title. So once I was in those classes, it was kind of foolish for them to, to sort of bring me back into the 125s. And Johnny O'Mara was, was taking care of that class while I was <laughs> in full swing. So we had all the bases covered. Yeah, you're not kidding. You had it covered. Right now, Kudrowski is riding along in fifth. He's trying to chase down James Dobb and Damon Bradshaw, who's off to a great start. And Art Ekman has more on that. Well, Bob, it was evident in practice that uh, Mr. Bradshaw was going to put on a fine performance here today. Yeah, ever since uh, press day, he's been pretty much on kill. He's feeling really good, and his speed's been really high. So. I understand he went out and worked out with Bob Hanna during the off week? Yeah, he spent the week up in uh, Idaho with Bob, riding bicycles and running, riding a little motorcycle here and there. So he's feeling really good. Working out with Hanna, we know he's serious how to finish up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that was a good decision by uh, whoever's idea it was. Uh, you know, the reason Damon retired is because he wasn't having any fun. And, and so far this season, we've talked about the fact that he's been just involved in all these pile-ups and had bad starts and a lot of bad luck. So uh, you can bet that Hannah put a lot of fun back in his program, and it's showing right now. And his best finish so far this year overall is a fourth. But he sits right now in third here at Binghamton as you pick out your favorite rider on the Suzuki Top Ten. We'll be right back. Back at Binghamton, New York, moto number one past the halfway point. Get a look back at uh, Todd DeHoop and Larry Ward. They're having a battle there, and uh, Ward with a little problem negotiating the exit of that turn. Well, uh, <laughs> DeHoop got a little out of control, and I think maybe uh, Ward was just watching too closely and made the same <laughs> mistake. That used to happen to me. Sometimes you watch the guy in front of you, and they do something a little different and uh, not too smooth, and it's, you just kind of get sucked in. You make the same mistake, so it'd be, uh, it's the advantageous for a faster rider to try to get around uh, any of the back markers, especially when you're lapping riders, not get stuck in uh, what's happening with those guys. Right here, Larry Ward just seems to be uh, patient and waiting his, his spot on the racetrack where he thinks he's faster to make a pass. Well, Kyle Lewis is looking to make a pass, but first he has to catch Phil Lawrence, who's holding down the sixth spot. Once again, the uh, top privateer. And, you know, David, uh, Phil has made a living this year off of that uh, $500 that Camel Skull provides to the highest finishing privateer. Well, it's not quite the living that uh, I'd say Jeremy's earning right now, but for a privateer, that's nice to have that extra little bit of dough to uh, help you get around. Being a privateer, I, you know, pretty much everyone uh, has had to go through that stage in their career, and I remember it was pretty pretty difficult. It's nice that uh, those companies have gotten involved. Right now, Kyle Lewis trying to chase down that sixth spot. He's trying to follow up a great finish at Washougal, where he came home in the third overall position. But he loses a little bit of ground there. Now you get a look at Damon Bradshaw flying through the air. He holds down the third spot. I like the way Damon came out of that corner. He got out of that berm early, he got out of that slick stuff up into the traction, was able to triple that. And uh, right there, staying out of the berm, picking good lines. It's one of the things I always enjoyed watching about Damon. He's uh, very creative out there. Look at Dehoop. Carries a lot more mom momentum around that corner. Ward got out of that berm early, same as Damon, but he got a little bit more wheel spin and uh, just elected not to go for that triple. And that's what happens when you back off. Back to that battle for the sixth spot. They'll come up the hill as Kyle Lewis tries an inside line to get around Phil Lawrence. And now he goes to the outside. He's caught him side by side. He cuts off the corner to come up to this jump. And will he get to position momentarily? But look at Phil Lawrence come back in on the inside. Well, Lawrence just got aggressive right there coming to that corner. He controlled the inside, which and Lewis knew it, so he was uh, wise to back off there and let him have it. But Lewis appears to be running a little bit faster pace in certain sections of the racetrack and uh, get, having to get real creative with his line choice. But you can see all the rocks and everything flying. If you follow that, it's you can't even see where you're going. It's just nailing you. It hurts, you know, besides the fact you can't see. So you almost have to take different lines. Do you wear a chest protector here? 
Well, most of the guys do. You can see right here, Lawrence doesn't. Maybe that's why he was <laughs> trying to hold him off. He doesn't have anybody roosting him, but uh, most of the guys wear chest protectors. I remember getting roosted by Hannah here uh, back in like 1983, and it, I broke my finger during the race and uh, didn't know it. It just was numb the rest of the race. Second moto hurt, but uh, rocks are flying and it, it hurts. How many uh, motors did you miss after you found out it was broken? Well, actually none. Yeah, I had to keep going, and it was a tight battle that year for the championship, and as it turned out, I won the title, and uh, kind of lucky. Uh, Hannah got hurt. A lot of guys got hurt. Johnson, that was the year he dislocated his hip, and had I, if I missed any motos at all, I wouldn't have won the title. So I had to ride through a little bit of pain, but it paid off. Well, right now, things are paying off for Phil Lawrence. He holds down the sixth spot. He has fended off the challenge that he was receiving earlier from Kyle Lewis. As you get a good shot of uh, the distance there, uh, he's put quite a bit of distance on Kyle Lewis, in fact, over the last lap or so. Well, sometimes what happens when you're trying to pass a rider is, is you, you put on a pretty aggressive charge and you maybe get close and uh, you're not able to make it stick and then you just sort of kind of drop back and regroup and uh, apparently that's what Kyle Lewis is doing and right now Bradshaw appears that he's caught John Dowd quite a bit. Dowd is uh, unable to match that pace of McGrath and now he's slipped back into the grasp of Bradshaw. Well Bradshaw is putting on the heavy charge. Remember he uh, got together with Hannah this week and uh, been training a little bit harder from what I understand and uh, maybe he's ready to finish the last four motos with a vengeance. But right now he's got his sights set on his teammate John Dowd. And Dowd of course dislocated his shoulder uh, before was Shugel and I'm wondering if maybe that's coming into play right now. It could be. I don't. I don't think that uh, he missed enough races and enough time to where he would lose that much fitness. So I, I think it's probably Bradshaw is riding pretty strong, and no one's been able to go as fast as as Jeremy all season <laughs> when Jeremy's on fire. So I think things are looking okay for Dowd right now, and I think Bradshaw has just shown us what he can do. Well, as I try and get a look to see where Jeremy McGrath might be, Jeremy has. Uh Pulled out to a rather sizable lead. He got the whole shot and took off. He was battling with Dowd for the first few laps. Dowd managing to hang close, but never did really put any pressure on McGrath. McGrath is now pulled away. Now Dowd is either fading or Bradshaw has turned things up a notch because Bradshaw has cut this uh, the separation down to probably about three and a half to four and a half seconds. Well, I think it could be just a little bit of both, John. Uh, Dowd still looks pretty good. I'm watching the way he's riding. He still looks aggressive everywhere. I don't see any signs of him getting tired at all. But uh, now there's problems for Larry Ward. He's got his goggles hanging on the handlebar. So this looks like uh, it could be it for moto number one. Well, you know, David, I'm wondering in practice, he went down pretty hard and was complaining his wrist was a little bit sore. Uh, you think that might be it? Well, it could be. Judging by the look on his face as he rode by the camera, he was, he was making a, a funny face. That it's hard to tell if it's pain or if he had something in his eye. But uh, that, that could be the problem. He just passed the mechanics area, so he's got to go a whole other lap. So the chances that it's something wrong with the bike is uh, very slim. Now this is back in fourth place as James Dobb has kind of settled into that as uh, he's having a pretty decent ride today. Not bad. He's been sort of hot and cold all season at, at uh, Mount Morris. He had a really strong run. He's going for the moto lead with uh, Doug Henry. And it, at times, he's ridden very strong. Uh, Unadilla, he had a good moto going, but uh, unable to put together real consistent finishes week in and week out. Well, he holds the fourth spot right now, but McGrath is your leader as you take a look at our Suzuki Field Summary. Pick out your favorite rider. Back with the finish right after this. Back at Binghamton and Jeff Emming, remember he crashed, had to uh, get the front fork straightened out early on in moto number one. Well, guess what, David? He's fought his way back up into the top ten. Now he's right behind. It looks like Larry Brooks there. So he's starting to work his way up into uh, familiar territory and familiar riders. And uh, he looks pretty aggressive right here. He's obviously uh, trying as hard as he can. And it still looks to me like his handlebars are bent. It looks like the throttle side is bent back towards him, and that's got to be really tough to adjust to. Now, with that problem and charging from the rear of the pack, how worn out is he going to be? Well, I don't think that the problem is going to wear him out much, but charging from that far back in the pack, around the 30s, I, I would assume is how far back he was, he's passing two or three riders at a time. They're taking the best line, so he's got to hit all the holes, and he'll be tired after this. Well, right now, Emmett gets around Larry Brooks. I believe that's going to move him up into the seventh or eighth position. Art Ekman is down in his pits. Steve Butler, Jeff Emming picking up some valuable, valuable points coming all the way back from 25th. That was a hard crash. Yeah, it is. He's just moved into ninth place, so that's a few points. And what is that, three motos left in this series, so that's still a possible 75 points. So you can never count it out. Hanging by a thread. Yeah, it looks a bit like it. 
hoping that some of our teammates got to put some pressure on uh, Jeremy, but he seems to be running away pretty good too. Lemig right now is posted as eighth place by AMA scoring. Now you get a good look at Ezra Lusk, who's making his comeback, just uh, got passed by Doug Dubach. And Lusk, uh, of course, injured his wrist early in the season, missed almost the entire season. He's running back at about the uh, 14th spot right now. That's a pretty interesting line he has there, way on the outside. He jumps that plateau uh, pretty nice, lands perfect on the downside. Remember, he had a great start. He's up around fourth or fifth in the beginning of the moto, but wrist injuries can be pretty scary, but uh, it's good to see him back out there. Yeah, he's giving it his all right now. Take him a while to ride back into shape. Maybe he'll be ready to go at the start of next year. Let's hear Ezra's thoughts. It's been four months since I've been to a race, and uh, I was in a cast for like two and a half months. And finally started back riding, and I start, started feeling pretty good, and. I just couldn't uh, couldn't take it no more, you know. Those guys had two weeks off last last two weeks, and uh, I was really ready to come back. I wanted to come back a few weeks ago, but you know they wouldn't let me. They wanted me to stay home and get healed. So I'm back, and I'm ready to have fun and get out there and get a little dirty. <laughs> That's what it's all about, isn't it? No, I like to try to stay out front and clean like McGrath, if I can. <laughs> yeah, look at Jeremy's bike. My gosh, it looks like he just took it through the car wash, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That's probably uh, what Skip told him before he went out there. Keep it clean. You know, it makes his job easier between motos. Yeah, really. I mean, Jeremy got off to that great start. He has ridden a nearly uh, flawless moto, as far as we can tell. And now we're on the final lap. He's got one lap to go. And as you look behind him, second place John Dowd, nowhere in sight. You got the feeling that Jeremy can just uh, stand up and ride around. And uh, Bo does a nice little jump there for the fans, though, and a little wave. Well, he's obviously very relaxed, and it's, you know, they, they talk about that zone and, and basketball, Michael Jordan's in the zone, and, and I think that Jeremy's in that zone right here today. I mean, it's just, it seems like he's really not using a whole lot of energy. He's just hopping over the holes. It, all, it looks like he's having fun out there, and uh, that's the ability he possesses, and he's doing a fine job of it today, and I don't think anyone's even going to get close enough to figure out how he's doing it and what lines he's choosing. Well, once you get into that zone, it's hard to knock you out of it, isn't it? I mean, it just seems to keep getting easier, doesn't it? Well, sometimes. I mean, it's uh, a lot of things change. Between motos, I remember one time here, the last time I raced here, in fact, the second moto poured rain. And the 125s get up out there uh, between motos and, and beat the track up, and you got to change lines. And Jeremy has that ability to uh, adapt, and, and he's very versatile, and, and uh, that's what it takes to, to adapt. Sometimes you can't. You might get a bad start in the next moto, and everything would change. Well, right now, he is out front looking to notch his ninth Moto victory of the year would be nine victories, moto victories, out of 21 possible, almost 50%. And he's been fairly consistent, not finishing out of the top 10 in the overalls all year. And that is how you win championships, and you win them in convincing style by doing that. Well, he's uh, about as dominant outdoors now as he has been indoors for the past several years. And uh, that was something that a lot of us didn't think we were going to get to see. And it's nice to see him up there, a real challenge. It's, it would have been nicer, though, to see the rest of the field stay healthy and uh, really present a challenge. We would have seen some fantastic racing uh, in this class if everyone would have been able to stay healthy. And I'm not saying that he wouldn't have won, but it uh, been, been a lot closer, I think. Well, you know, he had a kind of a knock as not taking the outdoors seriously. Why do you think he changed this year? And, I mean, he got, got the trainer to get in better shape. What, do you, what happened? Well, I think Jeremy likes to win. And... Uh, I don't think he'll be able to sign a contract for just Supercross only, so he's going to have to go out there and ride outdoors, and it's embarrassing to go out there and get fourth and fifth and, and to be leading races and to get passed, kind of like he did last year uh, occasionally. And this year he just wanted to settle the score and prove to people and to himself that he could do it outdoors as just like he did indoors. But look, he waves to the fans. He's getting a, a lot of fan support these days, a lot of Jeremy McGrath supporters. Oh, well, almost a miscue there as he comes across the finish line, but there he lays it sideways. McGrath, the winner in moto number one. Al Familiar gets the whole shot, leads the entire moto to take his ninth moto victory of the season. A good ride for Daddy, hangs in there in second. Bradshaw, third, Dobb, fourth. Kudrowski hangs in there in the fifth spot. But as you look at the rest of the top ten, take a look where Jeff and Mick winds up. He finishes seventh. Art Ekman is downstairs with our winner. Well, Jeremy, you ran like you were trying to nail down a title. Did you use up all your good lines on that one? You know, I just was out there riding at first. I was a little tight and then started finding the lines out there and just started trying to read, ride smooth. Um, I knew John was on my tail and, you know, he knows this track like the back of his hand. And 
I figure if I was staying even or pulling a little on him, I was doing all right. Well, it had to give you a little vote of confidence uh, when Emig went down. Well, I actually didn't know Emig went down, but um, I mean, it has to help me for sure. I mean, that's tough luck for Jeff. He's, you know, he's definitely the, the contender with me. And, uh, you know, I was looking for a good race with him. I mean, I didn't expect him to go down. I was hoping I didn't go down myself. And, and uh, I'm just happy to come away with the first moto win. Well, you got to stay up now for number two. Yeah, I got to. I can't have reverse scenario here. I got to just get a good start in the next moto and, uh, you know, ride my heart out. Boy, that's got to scare the competition. John Dowd, what a great ride he had. He challenged Jeremy early, but he winds up with a second-place finish in moto number one. John, quite a few of the riders have been complaining about arm pump and tightening up. Is it because of the two weeks off, maybe, or is it the track conditions? Uh, well, it's probably a little both, yeah. I think uh, the track is kind of kind of strange today. It's, it's real loose all on top. There's some good berms and stuff, but once you get underneath that loose stuff, it's got a hard, uh, slippery kind of bottom. So, it, you know, you really, it's kind of sloppy. I mean, the bike's always sliding around. You, you're never sure when you're going to get some good traction on it. So, you know, you tend to hang on a little tighter, and I, I think that's why your arms are pumping up a little more today. Well, second place is a, a good position for possible overall honors if you should do well in Moto2. And uh, let's face it, when contract is up, uh, it, it pays off. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to Moto2. I, I always, I kind of have a habit of being a little tight always in the first Moto, so I felt pretty good. You know, I was kind of keeping up with all of these guys and stuff, so I'm really looking forward to Moto2. Number two. Hopefully, I, hopefully, I can stay a little more loose and just uh, hang with it. <laughs> But you gotta believe it's gonna be tough to hang with Super Mac. Back with the start of Moto number two, right after this. Getting set for the start of Moto number two, and you get a good look at Damon Bradshaw. And what a great finish for him. A third place in Moto number one. I believe that matches his season's best since coming back, getting stretched out. And David, I've been doing a little math right now. If Jeremy happens to win this, Emig has to finish third or better in order to take the championship battle on to Delmont. Well, that puts a lot of pressure on him. It's also pressure on Jeremy. I mean, it's not, not that easy to go out and win another moto. I mean, he looks like uh, from the first moto that, that he'd be able to do that. But like I said, the start is, is crucial, and there's a lot of... You heard Dowd say how weird the track is today, and that could take its toll on uh, on Jeremy. But but uh, Emig has definitely got to go out there and perform well, and is coming from as far behind as he did in the first moto. I mean, he really put together a pretty good ride with Ben Hamlebars, and uh, you can bet he's a little irritated. Remember Millville? He was a little irritated in the first moto when he had problems there. Came back very strong in moto number two. Well, the start, very important right here. You get a good look at the riders there getting set, waiting for the gate to drop. And now they're off. Let's see who makes it through. It looks like Jeremy's off to a pretty good start on the inside. Also, Emig, I see Emig in there. It looks like he's going to get the whole shot, but is it going to last very long? Well, Emig looked like he cut all the way out across in front of Jeremy, tried to take the line away, but it didn't work out. Jeremy, a little bit more clever, uh, held a better line to the next corner and overtook the lead. So it is Honda followed by Team Yamaha. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Bradshaw and Dowd all right in tow, but Jeremy once again out out to a good clean start and uh, at this point you just want to make sure you don't take any weird lines you don't try to go too wide looking for a smoother line you just protect your line not let anybody get underneath you and after that first lap you know where everything is how the track has changed and uh, Jeremy should be able to hang on to that lead now let me ask you a little something here because you've got the two Yamaha teammates right there you've got Dowd in third you've got Emig in second in that championship hunt trying to chase down McGrath trying to salvage it uh, at least a chance when they go to De Delmont but you've got uh, Dowd there he finished second if he can get around his teammate Emig and then beat McGrath he wins the overall. So do you think there's, uh, what do you think they've been told? Well, I don't think they really discussed a whole lot. I, I think probably the most important thing now that you brought it up is the championship. Yamaha would much rather win a championship than this race. Uh, so they're going to try to do anything they can to get Emig in the picture. And uh, if these guys can come around and put a little extra pressure on Jeremy and sort of mess with him, then, uh, you know, that, of course, they would encourage that. But uh, that Jeremy, I, I think, is too smart for that. He'll just do his own thing and, uh, you know, continue to do what he's done all year, and that is to put the pressure on everybody else. Well, right now, the pressure is being applied by Damon Bradshaw as he goes after his teammate, John Dowd. I guess uh, you can still call them teammates. I mean, even though Damon doesn't really have a contract with Yamaha, he's still supported by Yamaha. Right. Well, it's kind of like <laughs> Jordan coming back to basketball. You know, yeah. He kind of does whatever he wants, and whatever number he wants to run, they just, you know, they find him, but I don't think it matters too much. And then Bradshaw's in the same position. He's so well uh, liked and everyone was so encouraged to hear that he was coming back uh, especially Yamaha they're gonna let him do whatever he wants to do and I'm sure they're all treating him like a teammate 
you think uh, he's going to have? Oh, look at that. Dowd has a problem trying to negotiate that. It looks like he might have cased it. And he drops it and goes down, and he is losing positions by the handful. There must have been four, five, six riders passing there. And Bradshaw was a uh, pretty good reaction time for him not to run over Dowd because he was right there in that berm and committed. And uh, he just had the, the right reaction time to, to get on the brakes a little bit and steer inside of him. But Dowd just got into that corner a little bit hot, front end, front end went over the berm, and he tried to turn back inside of it. And, uh, didn't have any good traction there. That's the traction he talked about. The soil was kind of weird, and it got the best of him there. Well, look at that. We talked about Ezra Lust taking some strange lines. It almost looked like coming into that turn that he pulled right off of the course. This is a battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth, and you can see Dowd, after dumping it, he has dropped all the way back to the seventh spot. But you can expect that Kudrowski is going to try and put the heat on Dobb right here as he's trying to set him up for the pass. But Ezra Lusk is looking pretty good, too. Take a look at our Honda field summary. Pick out your favorite rider in the top ten, and we'll be back with more right after this. ESPN Speed World welcomes you back to Binghamton, New York. A great battle shaping up for the fourth spot. James Dobb has it, but Mike Kudrowski wants it. He tries it on the inside to come up the hill. And Man, he set him up perfectly for that, it looked like. That was nice. He just put a little bit of pressure on him coming into the corner and forced Dobb wide and then uh, took the inside right here. Uh, Dobb trying to do something a little interesting to get back underneath him, but it looks like Mike's going to control that, that uh, number four position for now. And you might have just seen that uh, other Yamaha, the blue and white one. That is John Dowd. He just flashed past Ezra Lusk and moved into the sixth spot. Lusk relegated back to seven. But look at this up front, David. you got Jeff Emick. He is now the leader. That's because Jeremy McGrath dumped it out there on the course just moments ago. And you can see Jeremy right behind him. He's already got it back up and is in hot pursuit. Well, it's tough to recover, uh, when you, especially when you got a guy as fast as Emick that comes by you when you go down. It's tough to recover and get back into your rhythm. We talked about that zone. Uh, well, maybe that crash interrupted it, and we'll see how good Jeremy is if he can recover and put a pass back on Emick. But, you know, he really doesn't need to. It's only three points. He's uh, leading it right now after the moto number one by 44 points. So Jeremy, as long as he keeps Emick in sight, is still in pretty good shape to uh, win the championship. Sure, but uh, I think when you're that close, <laughs> yeah, you know, you can see how aggressive Jeremy came around that corner. He's going to try and do anything he can to wrap up that title today. I mean, he could smell it. If he can win this moto and anything happens, you see how fast all these guys are going. If they can get around Emig, which Yamaha probably wouldn't allow, uh, he could win that title. <laughs> well, look at this. Bradshaw settling in at third, but maybe not for long. Kudrowski has caught him, and John Dowd is putting on a furious charge. Remember, he lost it out there just a few laps ago, and he has already rallied back up into the fifth spot, and he is going to be putting the pressure on Kudrowski, who's trying to put the pressure on Bradshaw. Right, well, that's going to force this pace to uh, quicken, and right now, Bradshaw looks pretty strong. It doesn't look like they're really uh, catching him and putting any pressure on him yet, but uh, Damon, did two motos in a row up front. That's good to see. Yeah, and he hasn't crashed yet today. That's very good to see. <laughs> Gosh, I hope I didn't just jinx him, you know? Well, me too. You guys had enough problems since his return, and he's shown a lot of speed. I mean, this sounds like a broken record. I keep saying he's had a lot of problems, but he's shown the speed that he can run up front. He hasn't shown the speed to win a moto. I don't think he's got the speed that uh, Emig has displayed or, or LaRocco when he was healthy, and definitely that of uh, Jeremy McGrath. But uh, the season's not over yet, and next season's a whole different story, and that's where he's really putting all his focus. You know, uh, just uh, seeing one of the turns just a little bit ago kind of brought back some childhood memories. As there's a pass now as Dad gets around. Childhood memories of plowing the field. It looked like our backyard when it would get plowed just before you planted the garden. But there is the move for the fourth spot. John Dowd has gotten around Kudrowski, and what a ride he is having. Remember, he finished second to McGrath in moto number one. Now that he's gotten around Kudrowski, he will set his sights on Bradshaw, his teammate. And Bradshaw, the way things sit right now, look, is looking at a second overall. If he can uh, hang on and keep that thing on two wheels, stay ahead of Dowd, which would be his best finish of the season. And uh, that'd be nice to see some progress towards the end of the season and give him a little more confidence going into the to the offseason into next year. You know, Jeremy talked about what he was going to do during the offseason. What do you figure Bradshaw will do? Well, he'll probably want to take some time off and have fun, fly his plane, maybe spend a little bit more time with Hannah. But you can bet he'll be doing a lot of testing and a lot more riding to uh, try to make up for that little bit of speed that he seems to be lacking right now in terms of winning races. But you guys don't really uh, have that much time off. There really is no offseason, is there? No, not at all. These guys are racing 
oh, probably 30, 35 times a year. They do races in Europe, uh, the World Championship Supercross Series. They do the Japan Grand Prix. The Japan Supercross, of course, is a, a huge one. All the testing they do overseas, and they don't get much of a break at all. <laughs> I tell you what, right now, Jeff Emig's not getting a break because if he had a rearview mirror, it would be filled with Jeremy McGrath coming up the hill, trying to draw alongside Emig to take over the top spot. Remember, Jeremy took uh, the lead away from Emig, Emig on the very first lap, and now he takes it again after dumping it. McGrath, just unbelievable. Well, I mean, the he's, guy comes way, but he is definitely in that zone that you talked about. Definitely. You can see he did a little cross up over that plateau, pulled the tear away, looked over at Emig as if to say, you know what, don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> look at the lines he's choosing. Jeremy's just floating over every hole. He's, look at him. He's, just, he's so much more superior uh, than these guys. It just, it's got to be very frustrating. Here's another look at this pass. He squares the corner. Emig does too, but he squares a little tighter, finds a little bit better traction, then he just angles down the inside and just cuts uh, Emig off. And there's nothing Emig could do about that. They both charge into the corner, but Jeremy just positioned himself perfectly. He really is an awesome rider. It's he's, a shame there's he's not, good. not a whole lot of competition out there. Well, there would be with Henry. There would right. be with LaRocco. Albertine at, at certain times, I think, at certain tracks would be quick. Emig has ridden fantastic. Uh -huh. I don't mean to, to downplay his uh, season. He's had a fantastic season. But Jeremy this year is just on a roll, and uh, I don't think anybody can stop him. Well, it doesn't look like they will stop him in moto number two after he got around Emig. He's starting to pull away as you take a look at our Honda Field summary. Back with more in a moment. Another superb job as always. And speaking of superb performances, John Dowd, remember he fell early in this moto, and now he has chased down his teammate Damon Bradshaw and is making a serious challenge for that third position. Well, he sure is. And I talked earlier about how difficult it is to fall down and get back up and, and find that pace again. Well, uh, Jeremy did it, and Dowd's doing the same thing. He's got a lot of pressure from Kudrowski right here, but uh, Dowd it seems unaffected by it, and they've definitely caught Damon. Right now, Kudrowski would like to get around and uh, make a Yamaha sandwich for just a little while, get between the two Yamahas. He's going to try a little different line there, but it doesn't uh, seem to pay off. Although, man, he might have picked up a bike length. Yeah, maybe so. You see all that dust kicked up right there. That's from Bradshaw. He doesn't really like to ride the... Uh, the line everyone else does. He likes to pick his own. He's very creative. And sometimes all you got to do is move over a foot to miss a rock uh, that you might land on or, or something like that. And right there, Dowd makes a little mistake. And Kudrowski goes right by. Kudrowski triples that. It was a real easy pass for him. Just a big mistake by Dowd. And Dowd still seems like uh, he hasn't recovered from that. He's reaching up, fiddling with something, maybe with his goggles. And you see all the time he's lost in the, in the process. I'll tell you what, let's slow it down and uh, take another look at it, David. Well, Dowd has a tendency to sort of dangle his foot in the, in the corners, and I thought maybe his foot touched the ground, his knee came up and smacked the handlebar and stood him up, but uh, that wasn't the case. He just didn't stay leaned into the berm long enough and overshot it and lost all his momentum towards that triple. Right now, Kudrowski is in the fourth spot. He's got his sights set on Damon Bradshaw, who is riding along in third. And Bradshaw's got to be really pumped. I mean, well, a third place finish in moto number one. He's riding clean. He's near the front. Well, that's got to be a great feeling. And uh, it's been a while since he's been able to get away from a, a whole day without some kind of an incident. So this is an excellent. Uh -oh. oh, no. Oh, gosh. Bradshaw down. Kudrowski is down. And oh, gosh. Dowd comes in. And that is, that's Brian Manley, isn't it? With Looks some like problems. Brian Manley, yeah and just waylaid by three other riders. Holy cow. All I can figure is that Manley, who was getting lapped here, was uh, it came up short on that double or triple, and that's a blind spot. The flagger's uh, flag wasn't totally unwound. You see the one there on the stick? Look at this. Rolled up. The flag's not doing that much. Bradshaw right into his back. Oh. And Look at Bradshaw. But the thing that looked worse to me is just coming up right now when Dowd comes over. Head on. Oh. oh. He and just shoved him like a bull, shoving one of those clowns in the rodeo. No protection. Here's another angle. Mm. Kudrowski, just as he goes by, missed Manley with his foot peg by inches. And here comes Dowd. And Manley, you saw he got up, although he looks very, very sore, he got himself off of the racing surface. And still yet another angle. Bradshaw completely a, a somersault. And watch Kudrowski here with throttle mm. one right, running wide open. He takes a pretty bad tumble. Mm. 
there's not much more you can say about that. Yeah, Bradshaw is on the far side of the racetrack. He doesn't look too good. You can see he's being surrounded by the, the Yamaha camp and holding his right wrist. Now, that's not a good sign. I don't like to see anybody holding a wrist. That, uh, that took Lusk out of this whole season, pretty much, and that's the last thing Bradshaw needs right now. Well, it looks like everybody is up. No serious injuries that we can tell at this point. Take a look at the Honda Field Summary. Back with more from Binghamton right after this. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and John Kernan back for the final lap at Binghamton. And, hey, David, we might see some fireworks because Jeff Emig, I think, is still within striking distance, although, well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> well, anytime you're that close to a rider, you're within striking distance. Emig has got the motivation and probably the anger at this point in the season to go ahead and challenge McGrath. But uh, McGrath riding flawless today. It surprised me that he hasn't pulled away more, the, the way that he was riding. So that's a real... Uh, a testament to how well Emig is riding the second motor, and I think a lot of that is emotion. Well, quickly updating about the crash you saw just before we went to break. We don't have any reports of serious injuries, and uh, so that's pretty good news, but I don't think we'll have a further report by the time we uh, go off the air. But now a battle out on the track. In fact, one of the riders, Kudraski, who was involved in that, he was just about ready. Well, he is passed by James Dobb. Well, Kudrowski in that wreck, uh, his exhaust pipe was knocked out of the cylinder. So as he goes by, we're all plugging our ears, and he's low on horsepower. I tell you, Jeff Emig wishes he had a little more horsepower right now, a little more something to try and catch Jeremy McGrath, who takes the checkered flag to beat Emig by about a second and a half. McGrath with the clean sweep. Man. Turns around and gives today. Emig a uh, thumbs up right there. Yeah. Well, it was a good ride for Jeff Emig. Remember, he had problems in Moto Number One rally to a seventh-place finish, but a strong run here in Moto Number Two as he finishes second. And as you take a look at the rest of the top ten, Art Ekman has caught up with Jeff Emig. Well, Jeff, the fans got their money's worth as far as action is concerned with you guys passing each other like that. Yeah, you know. I yeah, I was fortunate, you know, when he went down. I guess I just didn't, uh, didn't maybe ride quite hard enough, you know, when I was, uh, you know, was out in the lead. No one can ever accuse you of not riding hard, however, despite the fact uh, of the disappointing first moto. Yeah, well, you know, some years some things go your way, and you know, we still got one race left, you know, but it's going to take a lot of luck. And you know, and Jeremy's riding real well right now. I mean, I mean, you know, I've been trying, you know, 100%, and then, you know, things sometimes they just don't go your way, I guess. And you know, and then I'll be back, you know, uh, trying again next year. It's just, I mean, you know, Jeremy's riding real hard, and he's going to earn, uh, you know, earn uh, the championship, you know, if he gets it. Here's a look at your overall results from Binghamton. Of course, Jeremy McGrath going 1-1, the clean sweep to take the overall. Impressive run by Jeff Emig as he finishes third overall. And factory Phil Lawrence, the top privateer. Art Ekman is standing by with Jeremy. Jeremy just getting through, uh, waving to his parents. Uh, there's not this season anyway, has a rider won two motos in one event. Well, I've never done it before, let alone today, but uh, I'm so happy I'm the first guy. I've, so I think it's my sixth overall this year, and I mean, I'm, I'm stoked. Like, you can't even imagine. I fell down on the second moto, and, and uh, you know, I just tried to charge my hardest and collect all my thoughts and, and uh, catch up, and I just put in a good charge, and I, I think I surprised him a little bit over here. Well, he wouldn't give up, that's for sure. Jeff Emig gave you a good run all the way. Oh, Jeff was on my tail the whole way. I knew. I knew it was going to be whoever wanted it more on that moto, and uh, he was hauling ass, and <laughs> so was I. And I just wanted to pass him bad. You know, it was, it's a terrible thing that I fell down. But, uh, you know, we came out together on the start. It was just a good battle all the way. Next week can't come too soon, huh? Oh, I'm stoked for next week. I uh, have to gain a couple points, and it's all mine. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need very many. In fact, if he finishes 18th, or better in moto number one at Delmont, it's his. I'm pretty sure he can manage that. He probably <laughs> just needs to stay healthy and show up and the championship's his. He's deserved it. Well, let's see, I think his worst moto finish is like what? Yeah, ninth at Mount Morris. So, yeah, I think it's almost, if, if I were gonna put money on it, I think I might uh, put it on the grab. <laughs> and another, another disappointing day for for Mike Kudrowski getting caught up in other people's problems. And speaking of disappointment, how about Bradshaw getting caught up in that mess? And uh, it appears, though, nothing's broken, but his arm is sore. It's questionable whether he'll ride or, or not next week. 
And no further word on Brian Manley, who took the brunt of that beating. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's show. We'll see you at the season finale for Art Ekman and David Bailey. I'm John Kernan saying so long, everybody.